because the church goes beyond the preacher the church goes beyond the choir the church goes beyond the position the church is all about Jesus Christ it's kick off Sunday we're getting ready to kick off this word but before we hear from the word of God we're going to hear another selection from Brother Donovan Jackson. Let the church say amen. God bless you. Nobody but God that's brought us. By 
by his faith and by his grace. Come on, give him a little bit, Melvin. Thank you for bringing us thus far on this journey. Thank you, dear God, for all that we have experienced. And we thank you for this morning's worship service. And now, Lord, we sit at your table waiting and wanting to be fed by you. Lord, feed us until we want no more. Feed us as, so that we might be nourished and have energy for this upcoming week. We don't know what awaits us, dear God, but we know that your word can carry us through. So bless this word as it goes forth. Give it wings so that it might reach every home, that it might reach every individual who's tuning in. And Lord, I pray that you open up their minds, open up our minds to receive your word. Open up our ears so that we can hear what you're saying. Open up our eyes so that we can see what you're doing. Open up our heart to love one another and then use our feet to make a difference in this world. God, we thank you. We love you. We praise you. And we ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Let's give God a hand of praise. Wow. Listen. I, I, Donovan Jackson did a, a remix on a classic. Amen. You know what? I, I, I love it. I love it because we serve a God of creativity. I believe that. If you don't believe me, just look outside. That's, that's God's creative handiwork in your life. God does this each and every day. And it is my belief that God calls us, God calls us to, to shake things up, to to remix some things so that it might have a new twist or a new flavor. And so we thank God for Donovan and the band uh, remixing it up. Still the same lyrics, still has the same meaning, but, but put a little different beat on it. Amen. Donovan Jackson is the, the P. Diddy of gospel singers. Amen. He just going to remix it up. Amen. And I ain't mad about it. It's kickoff Sunday. We're here to celebrate the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, open up your Bibles with me to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 22. Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 through 22. I'm reading this morning from the New Living Translation, but whatever you might have, follow along with me. It reads this way, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. And they cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Verse 12, didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, 
will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. And then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they will charge in after the Israelites. My great glory will be displayed through Pharaoh and his troops, his chariots and charioteers. And when my glory is displayed through them all, all Egypt will see my glory and know that I am the Lord. And then the angel of God, who had been leading the people of Israel, moved to the rear of the camp. The pillar of cloud also moved from the front and stood behind them. The cloud settled between the Egyptian and Israelite camps. And as darkness fell, the cloud turned to fire, lighting up the night. But the Egyptians and Israelites did not approach each other all night. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea, and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. I want to focus in on verse number 16 and then jump back down to verse 21. Verse 16 reads this way, pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. Verse 21, then Moses raised his hand over the sea and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. I'll stop there. Amen. The reading of God's word. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you from this subject the extra point, the extra point, amen. To those of you who are just now getting comfortable with our virtual worship service, um, as I shared earlier, every, every second Sunday in September, not only do we call it kickoff Sunday, not only do we celebrate our favorite teams, but it, it is also my intention every second Sunday in September to share a word that comes from the game of football. Amen. You can best believe that the second Sunday in September and Super Bowl Sunday, I will always find something to preach about as it pertains to the game of football and lines up with the word of God. And so this morning, this morning, I want to share with you from the subject, the extra point, the extra point. Truth is, this title came uh, just about two weeks ago, um, I was uh, at a homegoing service. And um, after the service, uh, where I had shared in, with the eulogy with family and friends, Pastor uh, Patrick Council, shout out to Reverend Council at St. John's in Newark. Uh, he came up to me, he's like, Rev, um, you took it all the way in. He said, Rev, you, you scored the touchdown. And now it's up to the people, he said, to get it. He said, and I pray that they don't miss the extra point. And I heard it. He went on. And I said, the extra point. He must have heard me. He said, that's right, Rev. He said, the extra point is important. He said, everybody always celebrates the touchdown. He's like, but the extra point is just as important. Couldn't let it go. And so that evening, of course, sat down, got in the lab. God placed it on my spirit, this whole extra point thing. And I said, well, kickoff Sunday is coming. Let's talk about the extra point. Now, some of you are, are, have clueless about the game of football. You, you, you wouldn't know a first down from a touchdown. But, but, but let me just share with you that uh, the game of football deals with offense and defense. Uh, and, and the goal is for the offense to drive down the field and score on the defense. That's it. And so when the offense scores, or sometimes the defense may score, they score what is called a touchdown. That's when the referee holds his arms or her arms up, touchdown. That they have scored, they have crossed the line, they have crossed the plane. And, and, and fans celebrate touchdowns. 
but as Reverend Council shared with me, but there is something that also takes place because um, a touchdown is worth only six points, but there's always an extra point that the team can gain after scoring a touchdown. And so as kickoff season starts today, and some of you are watching, once a team scores, now they have an option to go for a two-point conversion. That's a whole other sermon for another day. But in most instances, they line up to kick the extra point. The extra point is a short distance. It's literally two yards from the goal line. It's two yards from the, the line in which they just crossed to score a touchdown. And the kicker comes out, and the goal of the kicker is to kick this ball through the uprights to get the extra point. And I discovered, after hearing what counsel said, games are won and lost because of mixed, missed extra points. Playoffs are history because of missed extra points. Super Bowls have been lost because of missed extra points. And the amazing thing about the extra point is, it's so simple. It's, it's two yards. A, a person has the responsibility, the kicker, just to come on the field, kick this ball through the uprights, that's it. The kicker doesn't have to tackle. The kicker doesn't have to run like a running back or throw like a quarterback or a catch like a tight end or a receiver. The kicker doesn't have to block. All the kicker has to do is come on the field after, stay with me, after the touchdown has already been scored <laughs> and make this extra point. And do you know, for as simple as it is, there are countless, countless extra points that will be missed all season. But then, as I wrestled with this thing, it became even clearer that the extra point isn't just limited to the football field, but the extra point takes place in our lives. The extra point. What good is it for you to go through three, four, five years of college have one semester left or one class left and you refuse to take the class. You've missed the extra point. What good is it to paint your entire house but then leave one room unpainted? You missed the extra point. What, what, what good is it to try to get your bills together and pay them off? but yet hold on to that one credit card because you refuse to let it go. You're missing the extra point. And I thought about this message leading up to today. How many people are watching this right now who have missed extra points in their past? Gosh. Yeah, you've, you've, you've come a long way. And quite possibly you scored the touchdown, but it's not complete until you make that extra point. And what's so amazing about the extra point is, and I can't keep emphasizing it enough, it's so simple. It's that close, but yet you either miss it or refuse to do it. The extra point has to do with follow through. Yeah, you, you gotta follow this thing through, my brothers and sisters. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but you've got the business plan, apply for the loan, the extra point. You, you've gotten your home together, now, 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 now apply to do something with your home, extra point. You're in the relationship, you have someone, but you still have walls built up, extra point. You've got to follow this thing through to its completion. God is saying to someone this morning, I've done the heavy lifting for you. You need to follow through on the extra point. That's what I love about the Lord. 
God does the heavy lifting. Somebody can put that in the chat room. God does the heavy lifting. God is the one who drives us down the field. God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit helps us to cross the goal line. We've scored touchdowns in Jesus' name. But God says, I'm giving you the responsibility to make the extra point. And many of us just want God not only to score, but make the extra point, do it all for us. God says, I have gifted you with things. And I am calling on you to make the extra point. I believe, I believe, and I'm wrestling with this, I believe that, that the reason why our country is in the, the situation that it's in is because our churches are missing the extra point. Yeah, we're so busy trying to get back in the building that we are failing to have an impact in the world in which we live. We have put it in the hands of politicians and and news persons to to speak and, and to talk about our country when I believe that God is using and desiring to use us to be the example in the world. That's why we have craziness. Because the church is missing the extra point. We too busy praising for the touchdown. We too busy having Holy Ghost parties about our deliverance and about our breakthroughs. But our world is going to hell in a handbasket. God is saying you're missing the extra point. Don't celebrate just yet. Listen, as as Christ came out of the grave, the Gospel of Matthew records that he gathered them all together and gave them the great commission. Yes, he had died on the cross. Yes, he was buried and was now resurrected. And yes, he was in their presence, but he shares with them, now I've scored the touchdown, but you've got to kick the extra point. You've got to go further. Go ye therefore. That's what he tells them. That's the extra point. My brothers and sisters, I want to ask you this question. What's your extra point? What is it you're sitting down on? What is it you're not doing? What is it you're waiting God to do when you could do it? I'll never forget so many life lessons that come back to me as I share sermons, but I'll never forget uh, soon after I graduated from college, uh, I'm I'm, I'm sky high. You couldn't tell me nothing. I was all of that in a bag of chips, and I I think I graduated on a Saturday, uh, still celebrating on Sunday, uh, Monday morning, early on Monday morning, I'm in the bed, it's late. It's like 10 a.m., 11 o'clock, my grandmother's downstairs. She says to me, what you doing today? I said, I ain't doing nothing. I'm resting, resting for these six years that I put in to get this degree. I'm a college graduate. She said, you gonna get a job? I said, yeah, I'm gonna get a job. I got a degree, I get it. She's like, do you think that job is coming to you? I said, I don't know, but I got a degree and I'm going to get a job. She said, you going to get up, (laughs) take that degree and go. The lesson learned was, yeah, yeah, the the work had been done in the classroom, but the work had been done in the classroom to get the job. So what good is it to go through and acquire the degree but never fill out an application? Yes, I got out the bed. Yes, I filled out the application. It's the extra point. Case in point, Moses and the children of Israel and the extra point. 400 years of slavery. Pharaohs had come and gone. The newest Pharaoh was harsh on the people. The Egyptians' relationship had turned since Joseph had died being secretary of agriculture. The scripture records that the Israelites began to grow in numbers. The Egyptians became fearful of them. Pharaoh resented them, placed them under harsher conditions, making bricks from straw. God raises up a Moses. Moses is born. Pharaoh gives an edict that all male children born or two years or younger, must die. Moses' mother floats him in the Nile River. He is saved by Pharaoh's daughter. Moses grows up with the royal scepter in his hand. 
He's a prince of Egypt. But he's also a murderer. Because as he grows up, he sees an Egyptian abusing an Israelite. He kills the Egyptian. Now he's a man on the run. The scripture says he runs and flees to Midian. He's in Midian for 40 years. So for 40 years he's in Egypt. 40 years he's in Midian. He went from a royal scepter to a shepherd's staff. Those 40 years he settles down. He marries. But God shows up. God says, I'm not finished with you yet. God says, I've heard the cries of my people. I want you to go back and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. You know the story. You've seen Burt Lancaster and the Ten Commandments every Easter. You know he goes back. You know the plagues occur. You know that in the midnight hour, they take the belongings. The Egyptians give the belongings to the Israelites, and the Israelites leave in the dark of the night. They're making their way through this wondrous and, and winding journey making their way to this promised land. But even as they're en route, no sooner than they're leaving Egypt, Egypt is still in their minds. Egypt is still in their minds. And as they make their way to this pivotal moment, Exodus chapter 14, God leads them to this Red Sea. So now they have nowhere to go. There's a Red Sea in front of them. There's Pharaoh behind them closing in with numerous thousands of soldiers. And the people cry out to God and complain to Moses. You should have left us here. You should have left us back there, they said. In Egypt, we would have rather been slaves there than to die in a wilderness. You, you brought us out here to die. You should have left us alone. They're standing at the Red Sea. Pharaoh is closing in. Moses is leading the people. And they're complaining to Moses. Up until this point, God has already carried the heavy load. God has raised up a Moses. God, God has sent plague after plague. God has done the heavy lifting. And now they're standing at the Red Sea, and Moses does a few things. Here's what he does to show us how we make our extra point. First thing Moses does is he tells the people, yes, look at them. Look at Pharaoh. But instead of looking at Pharaoh, acknowledge God. How do you make the extra point when you acknowledge God in all situations? I don't want to just acknowledge God when the blessings come. I want to be able to acknowledge God in the midst of me looking at my Pharaoh, in the midst of me looking at my enemies, in the midst of me being surrounded, in the midst of my brokenness, in the midst of my debt. I want to acknowledge God. That's the difference. The people saw the greatness of Pharaoh, and they became fearful Moses saw the greatness of God. My brothers and sisters, the extra point is acknowledging God in all your situations and your circumstances. I will see God. I will not see death. I will not see the results the doctor said. I will not see my broken family. I will not see my unemployment. I will not see my debt. I will not see the floods that have damaged my homes. I will acknowledge God. Moses says to the people, I don't mind you looking, but you better acknowledge God. Because Moses said, look at Pharaoh and look at the Egyptians because this will be the last time you're going to see them. And it's not because of death. It's because of God. God will see you through. Listen, if you want to make your extra point, you better acknowledge God in all things. In all circumstances, acknowledge God. But second, second, it's here in the text. The scripture says that Moses cries out to God. Moses understands that he can't do it by himself. Now, he's been following God, and this is what I love. This is, this is, this is. I love this text because this speaks to humanity of what faith looks like. 
I know there's some folk that's Holy Ghost minded and you got faith that cannot be moved and shaken. But the reality is we go back and forth because, because we are human. As Moses tells the people, look at them, God is going to rescue us. The next scripture is saying Moses is crying out to God. <laughs> so on one hand, he's being bold and courageous for the folk. But internally, he's saying, God, what we going to do now? Yes. Can't tell you the number of sermons that I preached where I'm encouraging you while going through my own storm. Encouraging while I'm crying out at the same time. But God says, that's how you make the extra point. It's when I've called you to encourage, you encourage. Even though you might be going through, encourage somebody, but still talk to me. Because God wants me, God wants you to understand that even with all of your giftedness, you still can't part Red Seas. Even with all of your education, even with all of your material possessions, you can't get out of some situations. But God can. And God says, cry out to me. But as soon as Moses is crying out, he says to Moses, why are you crying out to me? <laughs> So perplexing. God says, Moses, I've scored the touchdown. Kick the extra point. I've done all of the heavy lifting. I'm taking care of Pharaoh. Don't worry about that. I've brought you out of Egypt. Quit talking about that and quit crying about what's in front of you. Kick the extra point. And the last thing is, as you acknowledge God, as you cry out to God, lastly, you got to use what God gave you. The scripture says that God tells Moses, raise up your staff. That's all he had. Good God Almighty. I could do this all day, but I won't. Listen, all Moses has is a staff. But what he has and what God has blessed him with is powerful enough to make that extra point. Can I let you in on a secret? I, I, I wish, listen, I was researching field goal kickers um, and, and extra point kickers, and, um, and um, um, there are some kickers, it's all about the shoe game, um, but I realized that there was a kicker, uh, Jack Dempsey, I believe his name was, uh, Jack Dempsey, was a field goal kicker back in the late 60s, early 70s, who kicked, here it is, with a half a foot. Part of his foot was damaged, but he still kicked. I wish you could feel me. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oftentimes, God has brought us to that point. God has scored the touchdown for us. God is telling us to kick the extra point. But we then want to assess what we have and if we're capable of making the extra point. Whew, I wish I could. I wish I could. And some of you are on the field and the ball is there, but you're afraid to do anything. You're afraid that you might miss it. Wow. You're afraid that it might get blocked. God has set you up. God has already scored. God is saying, now you do what I've created you to do, but you're too busy looking at what they have. Dempsey is kicking field goals with this club foot. And here we are with 10 toes and brand new Jordans on our feet. And we don't even want to get on the field. It's the extra point. Moses, quit crying out to me. Use what I've given you. Raise your staff and watch them waters part. My brothers and sisters, praise be to God for the extra points. Because Moses understands it's not the staff, it's the Savior. Yeah, it, it's not me, it's the one who created me. And this, this whole formula goes full circle because we start off acknowledging God we cry out to God, and then we use what God gave us. Here it is. Don't miss it. And once I use what God gave me to make the extra point, I then got to come back and acknowledge God. This is your shouting point right now. 
for every extra point that you've made, for every extra touchdown that God has made in your life, you need to acknowledge God right now. It's kickoff Sunday. You need to praise God for every opportunity, for every door. Donovan said it earlier, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. Guess what? He's never, never, ever failed me yet. Oh, I can't turn around. I've come this far by faith. My brothers and sisters, I'm challenging you this week. Kick your extra point. Don't listen to Satan. Don't even listen to yourself. Trust that God has equipped you to make the extra points. And so if it's going back to finish that class, make that extra point. If it's finishing something in your home, if it's restoring a relationship, make that extra point. If it's calling someone on your job, if it's setting up a meeting, make that extra point because God has already done the heavy lifting. To God be the glory. We look forward to having you join us next Sunday at the same time. Until then, acknowledge God. Never stop talking to God and use what the Lord gave you. And in all these things, I will acknowledge him for helping me make my extra point. God bless you. We'll see you next week. Amen. Give thanks to a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for he has given Jesus Christ his son. And now let the weak of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. One more time. Give thanks to a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, let the weak say, Give them.